This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Emmer. Emer. Reynolds. Emer. Gosh, I knew I was going to get that wrong. Um, right. Who is the director of The Farthest, which is a documentary uh, looking back at the um, Voyager and Voyager 2 uh, space program. Um, I want to start off coming as someone who was born just as the beginning of this stuff, like I came after the first couple planets, uh, which I should note is the mission to go by Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. That's great. Um, so I kind of was born right in the middle. And so I'll, I'll be honest, like it was really interesting for me to see because I mean, me and probably a lot of my generation take this stuff for granted. Um, but what was sort of your decision to make this documentary about this program? Well, I have a massive love of space and science since I was a child, and I am young enough. I was born in the 60s, so but I was alive when Voyager was launched, but I, my memories of it start around the 80s when it was visiting Uranus and Neptune over in, in Europe. Yeah, yeah. Sir Patrick Moore used to have this astronomy show that would be on every weekend or every every week, and they would do occasional Voyager programs. And I couldn't believe I was massively in love with space, but I couldn't believe this was now photographs from Uranus, now photographs from Neptune. It seemed unbelievable that we could actually achieve that. So it, it was born out of that great childhood obsession with Voyager. It is it is an amazing thing. I think it's great for people like, as I said, like I was unfor I mean, I'm va I was vaguely familiar with them prior to it, but it is an it is an amazing story. It is amazing what they've occurred, especially considering that for whatever dumb financial or whatever excuse reasons we have now, we have not attempted to go back. Um, how challenging was it to put together this story? Because I mean, this is a program that spanned 40 years. There's probably hundreds and hundreds of people that have been involved with it. I mean, the logistics of trying to put this in, I mean, I don't know what the end run time is, but an hour and a half, two hour type time frame seems like a logistical challenge to say the least. Yeah, you know, I'd say one of the biggest, it possibly was the biggest challenge of the whole filmmaking process with this film, that there was, so much detail, so much story, so much that we, we could have made 10 films from the material oh, yeah. we had and you know to try to find the best story through it, the best characters to tell it. In terms of footage we had over a thousand hours of archive, we had Voyager itself had taken like, thousands and yeah. thousands of images, we had over 120 hours of interviews so it was a you know it was a journey to go on to try to tell oh, yeah. a thrilling story and, a, and an interesting story and a, and a fresh story from that. So I had a fantastic editor and I think we look back and we say, you know, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step and we just started working through it and trying to find, yeah. you know, the great good, bits. Good place to start, a good place to start. <laughs> um, there are sort of two interesting narratives that stuck out to me. The first one was just the scientific research that's coming, you know, from going to Jupiter, Saturn, etc. And the second part is the golden record and sort of this notion of, you know, the statistical probability of aliens existing in some capacity. How challenging is it to both sort of include both of those topics and sort of give them equal um, attention, but also sort of like one is very heavily grounded in science and one of them is very heavily grounded in like probability that it's sort of like one feels much more sort of like science driven and one feels much more sort of like who knows the mysteries of the world kind of or mysteries of the universe kind of thing. I thought it was you know it's certainly one of the great parts about the story that Voyager yeah. does have this golden record because therefore the story and now the film are not just for science buffs or people who have a massive interest in yeah. that you know it, it's actually going to talk to other people who are interested in music and arts and philosophy so the film we were very fortunate that the Voyager the Voyager story has that element yeah. naturally you know well, it was an interesting thing because it sounded like that actually was in some ways the most um, popular thing, I mean, I guess in the general public was this this item that's going to space to talk to aliens, but in like in the significance of the program itself, it was kind of like a small element of it that people just seemed to fixate on. Yeah, and, and, and interestingly, like one of the scientists is, is says in the film that people who talk about Voyager are always more interested in the golden record and, and 
the aliens than they are about the science. But it's because, I mean, he makes a joke because he people are more interested in in that than they are about mineral the chemical makeup of a mineral on Mars. But yeah. so it's it's ironic. But I think that the film talks to maybe it's both sides of our oh, no, I mean, our yeah. existence, our yeah. scientific sides, and also our the big heart well, of the story. It, it, yeah, the influence of Thank like you. Hollywood from that perspective of aliens obviously is like a cachet that's going to draw the general public but the like i think the film does a good job of highlighting like the impact of the actual scientific discoveries of the program um, how difficult is it to sort of distill that information into sort of like i don't know what you call a lay person perspective because that could be i mean I, I imagine at the time it was a problem for nasa just to sort of be yeah. like this is why we're spending a billion dollars on this program um, but how difficult for was it for you to be like, no, no, this is actually significant and this is why? Well, you know, it, it's we wanted to make the film for a general audience, you know, so that it wouldn't be, it would have loads of science in it, but it wouldn't be the sort of science that Completely straight over your head and you're like, oh, I don't, you know, so as a result, possibly some of the more esoteric science that Voyager did and some of the yeah. groundbreaking, amazing science it did hasn't made it into the film because it's too... It's too difficult to explain, you know. So some of the more easier stuff to explain is the the visual imagery that Voyager captured, and it's an instant. I mean, at you, the very you least, you it. can take the perspective of like, hopefully, like for someone like me, this inspires them to go out and keep try and reading. Find more yeah, data. exactly, exactly. Um, I might be the only one to sort of take this perspective, but it was funny to me to watch because it seemed, in some ways it made Richard Nixon kind of t into a hero. Like, he's the one who created this massive scientific program that, I mean, unfortunately, like, he kind of was thrust aside while it was all going on, but uh, he was, seems to be the last significant president in America to really invest tangibly in this sort of area. Is that something that you thought about digging into? Why this sort of culturally has sort of detached NASA and Voyager has detached from the American people or was that just something that was just like this is too much to try and we certainly we certainly thought about it and wanted to get a bit more into that the story is just so full you know the film is two hours long it was it was so so much story already it was so hard to get into that but it, uh, I for me, the film has this, you know, it's in some ways this, the narrative goes through four presidents in this film over that time span. Right. It goes through Nixon, who basically greenlit the project, then, you know, you fell on his sword. Right. Then Carter, who was the president at launch and who's the, who is the message on the golden record, you know. And there's a great story about him where he, he wouldn't record his greeting onto the golden record because he was ashamed of his accent. Wow. <laughs> Which is a great, wait, yeah. wait, aliens aren't going to know Probably the different not accents. Probably significant problem. <laughs> then it goes to Reagan, which is, who was the president that was in power when the tragedy of the Challenger, Challenger accident. Yeah. And then all the way up to Obama, who was in power when Voyager 1 reached interstellar space, this right, massive yeah. historic milestone. And then, of course, you know, it might be just me, but there's another president then that's in the frame when you watch the film now, a president that maybe doesn't value science. Uh, I think that's probably a gentle way of putting it. <laughs> um, I mean, what is your sort of sense, sort of looking back on all these events? I mean, was it the 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 Challenger? Was it you know the death of Carl Sagan, who was sort of like this conduit to the space program? Was it the explosion of the internet and media and just in general? What was your sort of sense at what sort of was the point that the American people sort of started to lose touch with all these achievements that were going on before their eyes, but like, I don't know, for whatever reason, they seem to stop paying attention. And that's a very good question, I, and I don't know the answer. I do think that the proliferation of information that we're sub subjected to on a daily basis makes things a bit more... Hard to keep up. Yeah, sure, you yeah. know, but you see in the last few months or last year with Juno at Jupiter, you see with the Rosetta mission that the landing that little craft on the comet. You see, even in the last few weeks with Cassini on its final orbits of Saturn, I think there's still a massive appetite amongst the public, and certainly we receive it every day. People delighted and so excited to see a film about Voyager. I think there's much more interest in it than one, perhaps we, we can we one see. One interesting thing that occurred to me while watching this movie is obviously you know, for a multitude of reasons, but NASA sort of lost somewhat of footing for, you know, whether it's 
politics or whatever has sort of lost somewhat of their footing in the uh, the, the space and whatnot. Um, but there's this massive explosion with groups like SpaceX and whatnot. Was there any sort of thought to sort of talking to any of those people about what their goals are in sort of returning to space and if they have any sort of um, thoughts on their uh, plans in terms of exploring interstellar space or revisiting these plans? Because it's one of those things that when you talk about the technology on the Voyager, in terms of recording yeah. photos and stuff like that, yeah. it, it's like it's less power or less technology than a smartphone, and you wonder what could be possible if we actually put a modern craft out there to investigate. Absolutely, and, and maybe that's the sequel, you know, like what would we do I next? I think that'd be awesome, that'd be a great sequel. <laughs> but the, and some of it, it's the same answer as before, some of it's by limited by, the story was so dense and so full that we couldn't get any more in, it would be fantastic sure. to bring it up to date, and it'd be fantastic to ask all those questions about when are we going back out, and when are we going back out with great gear yeah. <laughs> that can learn even more. Yeah. From your perspective as someone who's been so deeply in sconces, what is it, uh, in the Voyager missions that you think is the most underappreciated aspect of it, that people who are sort of perhaps learning about more about this now should go back and be like, this is something you really should look into because this is quite a profound element that they did. I, th I think people forget now what we didn't know then, you know, oh, yeah. everything we kind of know about these planets That's started true, yeah. with Voyager. Yeah. The Voyager wrote the textbook and people don't realize that when they see the film, they're like, yeah. Oh yeah, we didn't have this profound knowledge and now it's you know it's getting more and more there's been orbiters around Jupiter there's been orbiters around Saturn we know an awful lot more but when Voyager was launched in the 1970s we knew so little yeah. so I think people don't people should look at this craft and say it's you know it's trailblazing it's it defined remarkable. science yeah. it's real remarkable considering like the technology that it's based on that yeah. it was able to achieve yeah. such amazing accomplishments and uh, <laughs> considering the sort of awkward starts to both Voyagers it, it is remarkable that they both both went on and achieved their mission. Exactly, they could have gone. Um, okay, so the film is the farthest. It's playing here at SIF. Um, are there any future stops you want people to know about, or is there a website that people should check out to, to find out where it might be playing near them? Yeah, there's. Um, we're on Twitter at the farthest film and Facebook at farthest film. Um, and people can check in there for details of upcoming screenings. We're showing at the Tellur Mountain Film Telluride Festival oh, in Colorado exactly. next yeah. weekend, Fantastic. if anyone's in that area. Yeah. And then hopefully hoping for uh, a summer release so people can go to it in their local cinema, fingers crossed, That's very fantastic. soon. Thank you so much. Uh, I wish you the best of luck with the film. It is a phenomenal film. Definitely, for, for me, I... It is something, as you said, that people take all this stuff for granted, and it was really like, wow, this is the basis for so much stuff um, that I really think it is advisable that people uh, check it out. I mean, honestly, this could be something that you have in schools at yeah. some point. I know you probably think about that, so uh, I, I, hope, I hope that is where it goes. Thank you. But thank you so much for doing this, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to buy the sound style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Rath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.